Welcome back to Wolfpack, and thank you for joining me for today's lesson, which is the properties and conditions for kites and trapezoids. The content objective for today's lesson is that you will be able to use the properties and conditions for kites and trapezoids to solve problems. Let's get started right away. I want to start off by saying that kites and trapezoids are different types of quadrilaterals. They are quadrilaterals because they have four sides, but they are not parallelograms because their opposite sides are not parallel. So all of the properties that we know about parallelograms do not apply to kites and trapezoids. Kites and trapezoids have their own set of properties. So kites and trapezoids, they are quadrilaterals, so they do have four sides, but they are not, and I'm going to write this in big capital letters, they are not parallelograms, okay? A kite, and I'm going to use the highlighter to showcase some things. A kite is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of congruent consecutive sides. Okay, congruent consecutive sides. And you probably have not heard the word kite a lot in math before, but you should be familiar with the shape of a kite from like flying kites and things like that. So it has two pairs of congruent consecutive sides. Actually, let me just go back to my highlighter to make it easier. Um, so as you can see right here, side BC is congruent to side BA. They're congruent and they're consecutive because they're next to each other. They're adjacent to each other. They're touching each other, okay? And then side CD is congruent to side AD. And again, they are the other pair of congruent consecutive sides. The next thing you need to know about... Um, kites is there are no parallel sides, right? So no parallel sides at all in kites. The diagonals are perpendicular, okay? As you can see right here, they have a 90 degree angle, okay? So it's 90 degrees on all sides. The diagonals are perpendicular. One of the diagonals bisects the other. I'm going to use the pen. So it looks like BD bisected CA. So that means this piece is congruent to that piece, okay? Next up, one of the diagonals bisects the pair of non-congruent angles. So the angles that are not congruent are bisected. As you can see, and I'll get back to something in a second. The next thing, two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. Okay, consecutive means side by side, which we talked about up here. That means CB is congruent to BA, and then CD is congruent to DA. And lastly, one pair of opposite angles are congruent. And you can see that in this picture right here. Angle C is congruent to angle A. Okay? Let's simply mark that a little better. Angle C, oops. Went back to the pen. Angle C is congruent to angle A. There's my pair of opposite angles. Um, and if we look back at the preceding bullet point, it says two pairs of consecutive congruent sides are congruent. Uh, two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. Again, they show us here that BC is congruent to BA and BC is congruent to DA. So here's another example of it. So looking back at this point where it says one of the diagonals bisects the pair of non-congruent angles. So I'm going to erase here so you can see this. This, obviously this angle and this angle, they're congruent, okay? So the non-congruent angles would then be B and D. So this diagonal is cutting angle B in half. So this piece is congruent to that piece, okay? And then the diagonal is cutting angle D in half so this piece of D is congruent to this other angle of D. Okay, which is really small, so I'm having a hard time marking on it. It does not mean that angle D is congruent to angle B. It just means that angle D is cut in half and angle B is cut in half. Okay? So I apologize. I know it's, uh, if it seems a little tricky, I know it's a lot of vocabulary. Um, but again, there are properties that are different. And there are things that we are going to have to learn. The next one is a trapezoid, which you should be more familiar with. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. Okay, so not two pairs, 
That's why it's not a, a parallelogram, but it does have one pair of parallel sides. The sides that are parallel are called the bases of the trapezoid, and the other two sides are called the legs. Okay, so we have the bases, and as you can see, they're parallel to each other. And then we have the legs, they're the other two pieces, they're not parallel to each other. Now, if it's an isosceles trapezoid, it's a little bit special. It has the same um, properties of a regular trapezoid, but it's even a little bit more fun. An isosceles trapezoid, it has one pair of parallel sides, just like a regular trapezoid, okay? And you can see BC is parallel to AD. But then the legs are congruent. So BA is congruent to CD. Um, and the trapezoid that we just looked at up here, the two legs, they're not congruent. You can see that one is clearly longer than the other. But if it's an isosceles trapezoid, think about an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. An isosceles trapezoid also has two congruent sides. Okay? So isosceles. Each pair of base angles are congruent. So angle B and angle C, the two angles touching base BC, are congruent to each other. And then angle A and angle D, the two angles on base AD, are congruent to each other. And then lastly, the diagonals are congruent. That means BD is congruent to AC. Okay? They're congruent to each other. Now, I want to clear something up. A lot of you may say, oh, well, base angles, that just means the bottom. So that's only talking about angles A and D. No, that is not true. If you look back up at our picture, this is a base and this is a base. So when I'm talking about base angles, I mean the two angles that are touching the base. So um, again, down here at this picture that's also a trapezoid, B and C. B and C are the two angles on the same base. They're both on the top base. They're congruent to each other. And then angle A and angle D, they're on the bottom base. They are congruent to each other. Okay? So a lot of vocabulary, things that we're going to have to learn, but then applying it is the same kind of thing that we've been doing using our algebra skills. So let's do a couple of examples, and then we will be done. Example one, find the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two. As you can see in this shape, we have a trapezoid. And it's just a regular trapezoid that does not an isosceles trapezoid because it does not show that any of the sides are congruent. Okay? So what I have is I have this line parallel to that line. And then here is my transversal. So angle one and this angle have to be have to add up to 180. I should not have marked it that way. I apologize. I happen to know they are congruent this time. That is mean it. So here we go. We have angle one, and let me just highlight or make it a little easier. And that angle right there have to add up to 180 degrees because they are same side and same side interior angles. They're consecutive angles. So I know that. This angle right here is 90 degrees because it's marked as a right angle. So that means angle 1 also has to be 90 degrees because 180 minus 90 is 90. Okay? And then again, on this side, we have two parallel lines being intersected by a transversal. And again, angle 2 and angle 53. I wrote angle 3, sorry. Angle 2 and then 53 degrees have to add up to 180 degrees because, again, they are same side interior angles. They're inside the two parallel lines, and they're on the same side of the transversal. So angle 2 is 127 degrees because 180 minus 53 is 127 degrees. Let's look at, uh, oops, there we go. Let's look at angle uh, shape B. This is a kite. We're looking for angle 1, and we're looking for angle 2. Well, I know that in kite, I have one pair of opposite congruent angles. 
and it's this set and this set. So it's the angle that's between side 1 and 2 congruent to the angle that's be between side 1 and 2. So angle 1 is easy, 110 degrees, because it's the same as op angle opposite it. Okay? So then I'm looking for angle 2. Well, let me erase some of this so we don't get confused. How much is this angle right here? Hopefully you know it's 90 degrees. It's a right angle. Okay, they marked it as a right angle. And then this diagonal is bisecting it. So that means that this piece of the angle is 45 degrees. So 110 degrees plus 45 degrees plus angle 2 all has to add up to how many degrees? They all have to add up to 180 degrees because we're looking at a triangle. So angle 2 is 25 degrees. If I add these two angles up together and subtract them from 180, it leaves me with 25 degrees. Okay? We will do examples 2 and 3 and 4 in class. If you want to try any of them ahead of time to see how you're doing, go ahead. Let's move on, though, to the last piece. The trapezoid mid-segment theorem. The mid-segment of a trapezoid, just like the mid-segment of a triangle, honestly, is a segment whose endpoints are the midpoints of the legs. It is parallel to each base, and its leg is one half the sum of the length of the bases. Okay? So just like the the triangle mid-segment, uh, it's parallel to both of the bases, and it's one half the sum. So MN is the mid-segment. And hopefully you understand MN is the mid-segment. Okay, it's cutting that, it's in the middle. It's not cutting in half, but it's in the middle. Okay, and so if I want to find the length of it, it's one half of AB plus DC. So whatever AB and DC are, add them together, cut in half, that's the length of the mid-segment. There we go. So let's do one example and then we will be done. If I want to know what MN is, I'm going to take one half of the two bases, which are 16 plus 9. So MN is one half of 25, one half of 25, 12, 25 inches. There's your mid-segment. Easy math to do. You just have to remember how to do it. Add the two bases together and cut them in half. Okay, that's it, guys. I know it's a little bit of a longer video, but it's mostly vocab. It's things that you're going to have to try to learn and memorize because you're going to have to be able to understand what makes a kite a kite and because a kite, what you're allowed to do with it and so on with the trapezoid. Have a great day. I'll see you next class.